Welcome! This is the complete overhaul and run-through of the Blackmagic Micro Panel for DaVinci Resolve's color page. I promise that not a single button, wheel or knob shall be skipped. When you look at the Micro Panel, you first notice the three trackballs, which are in Resolve's color page the color wheels right here. As the name implies, you modify with them the active clip's color balance, meaning the color hue and the color saturation of your selected clip. There are three balls as image in Resolve is being divided into three tonal ranges, which are from left to right, lift, gamma and gain. The lift ball modifies mainly the darker tones of the image. The gamma ball modifies mainly the mid-tones of the image. And the gain ball modifies mainly the highlights of the image. So darkest tones, mid-tones and brightest tones. I use the word mainly, as other ranges will also change slightly. Also, as the gamma changes are in the middle, there is an emphasis to the darker tones from the middle. This is because humans perceive more detail in darker than lighter tones. The color wheels have these thin color rings, which tell you in which direction you are moving the color of your image with the balls. With regular use of the panel, these color directions will grow into the user's muscle memory relatively quickly so you no longer have to see the color rings. The rings around the trackballs are the master wheels, which can be found in Resolve's color page as the sliders under the color wheels. Each ring controls the amount of luminosity in each three corresponding tonal ranges. Luminance is brightness that is being experienced subjectively through our own eyes. Left ring controls the amount of luminance mainly in the darker tones of the image. So with lift we define how black the darkest tones of our image should be. The middle ring controls the amount of luminance mainly in the mid-tones of the image. So with gamma we define how dark or light the mid-tones of our image should be. Right ring controls the amount of luminance mainly in the higher tones of the image. So with gain, we define how bright the highlights of our image should be. So once again, the balls are color wheels to control the color hue and saturation. And the rings are the master wheels to control the luminance of the image. At the top of each ball, you have three buttons, RGB, All and Level. These are reset buttons for each tone area individually. You can undo and return back to start with the changes you've made. RGB button resets the changes you have made with the color wheel to the hue and saturation of the color in the active image. Level button resets the changes you have made with the master wheel to the luminance of the active image. All button resets the changes you have made with both the color wheel and the master wheel. Each of the knobs in the top line of the panel function as a button as well. These buttons let you reset the changes you have made with each knob individually. So many reset buttons. One can conclude that reset is one of the central and most used operations in color grading. This is because the work is often about trying things out in practice repeating operations with slight changes to see how each image behaves with the changes. It's often only through seeing the actual changes that we start to understand what we want and where we want to go with each image. In the middle of the panel, we have the Log, Offset and Viewer buttons. The Viewer button opens and closes the so-called Cinema Viewer which displays the video viewer in full screen. One of the best features of a physical color panel is the ability to operate the panel with both hands while watching the graded image full screen. Very handy. With log and offset buttons you activate or deactivate two new modes to the balls and their rings. The third mode is the primary mode, which is active by default. 
By pushing log button, we move away from the primary mode into the log mode, where the control of the three tonal ranges do not overlap. The left ball and ring changes from lift to shadow, meaning that the ball controls the hue and saturation of the color, and the ring controls the amplitude of luminance of the darker tones of the image specifically. The middle ball and ring changes from gamma to mid-tone, meaning that the ball controls the hue and saturation of the color, and the ring controls the amplitude of luminance of the mid-tones of the image specifically. The right ball and ring changes from gain to highlights, meaning that the ball controls the hue and saturation of the color, and the ring controls the amplitude of luminance of the brightest tones of the image specifically. With the offset button, we can activate or deactivate the third mode available for the balls and their rings. The left ball does nothing, and the left ring controls the white balance and color temperature of the image, from warm orange to cold blue. The middle ball in offset mode does nothing, and the middle ring controls the tint, being the color tones of the image from green to magenta. One common use for tint is to fix the color distortions caused by indoor lighting. The right ball and ring are now the master color and master exposure, which means that the modifications with the ball and ring affect the entire tonal range of the image. Ball alters the tone of the color and the ring alters the amplitude of luminance on the entire image. As in Resolve's color page, the most expensive advanced panel has four physical balls and rings, the first three being the color and master wheels, and the fourth being the offset, the master color and master exposure. Next up are the top row knobs. Y-lift knob is for adjusting the contrast mostly in the darker areas of the image. Y-gamma knob is for adjusting the contrast mostly in the mid-tone areas. Y gain knob is for adjusting the contrast mostly in the brighter areas of the image. Contrast knob increases or decreases contrast of the overall image. Contrast is the distance between the darkest and the brightest parts of the image. Pivot defines the point of adjustment for contrast. Will it affect more darker or lighter areas of the image? Mid detail softens the areas of low detail or adds contrast to the areas of high detail. Color boost adds or diminishes saturation on low saturated areas of the entire tonal range. Shadows hides or lifts details into visibility from the darkest areas of the image. Highlights brings into visibility or hides details from the brightest areas of the image. Saturation adds or removes the overall saturation of the image. Hue rotates the color hues of the overall image. Lumix defines the degree in which the luminance of the image is being kept unchanged. When you raise a color in your image, you raise the overall luminance of the image. Eventually clipping data. With luminance mixer at 100, raising the color won't raise the overall luminance of the image as Lumamix is compensating the other colors for the luminance level to stay unchanged. Next, let's go through the upper group of the right side buttons. Grab Still saves the frame at playhead to the gallery as a high quality still, which contains the node structure used by the frame as metadata. Undo. As we stray from the path of the original image, Undo brings us back, step by step. Like Red Riding Hood, we are straying from the path of the original image over and over again. Redo becomes handy if we push undo too many times. Play Still displays the active still from the gallery on the right side of the viewer, making it much easier to compare a video clip to a graded still. Prev Mem is not full reset. It returns the active clip's grading status into its previous form. Reset removes all changes of active node. Holding the button will remove all nodes except the first one. All changes and keyframes will be removed. Loop 
activates or deactivates the looping of playback. Bypass activates or deactivates the node graph bypass mode, meaning that you can deactivate the entire node structure of the active clip. Disable enables or disables the current node. With prev node and next node you can move between nodes, which are numbered in the order of creation. Prev frame and next frame moves between frames in the timeline. Hold the button to go to the first or the last frame of the active clip. Prev clip and next clip moves between clips in the timeline, selecting the first frame of the clip. Play, rewind and stop. Press play or rewind multiple times to speed up the playback. The best asset of Micropanel is the enhanced quality of control it gives to the functions available also in the color page. The balls and the rings enhance your ability for precision for the smallest of tweaks, as well as the ability to make big changes just as fast and easily. Another asset of Micropanel is its size. If it were any smaller, its usability using adult hands would suffer. The panel is supposed to be relatively heavy, so that when you use it, it won't move. The size of the micro panel gives a chance for you to fit it on your existing desktop, instead of having to reserve an entire separate desk for the grading panel. If desk space was not an issue for me, I would have probably bought the slightly bigger mini panel. Another plus for the micro panel is the fact that it only needs one USB-C cable for both power and data. All the knobs and buttons of the panel are clearly available in Resolve's color page. So why buy a physical panel? Well, if you grade only occasionally, you don't need to. But if you color grade regularly, then you will develop a muscle memory for all the controls of the panel, enabling you to operate the panel with both hands while watching the image you're working on, preferably full screen. Thereby, the use of this panel will speed up the grading work considerably, justifying the purchase of this panel. There is no doubt this tutorial could have been improved. Please do tell me how. If something got you thinking or was left unclear, please do comment.